Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can make panoramas offline from the Spark uh, Saved Panorama images. So one of the things I found, and we're going to do this for free, by the way, uh, one of the things that I use is Image Composite Editor by Microsoft. It's a little bit of an older program, but uh, however, very effective. And I'll have the link down below, and you can download it. It comes in the 64-bit or 32-bit version for Windows. Windows. And uh, so I've downloaded the 64 bit and I have it installed on this particular machine. So, one of the pieces I want to do is I've got it running in the background, so I'm going to pull it up. And here's what it looks like when you start it. Now, to build your panoramas, what you need to do is go up here to New Panorama from Images, click this, and it will open up obviously the typical Windows uh, dialog box and what you'll want to do is uh, have your SD card from your Spark inserted and I do have that and so I have it in Drive I and you'll see the two top files DCIM and miscellaneous so I'm going to cl uh, click DCIM and then I'm going to go to the panorama file and then in here there'll be subfiles so all these are panoramic images which I've taken with the Spark now I'm going to in particularly do a 180 degree panorama this time and so I know that uh, from the order which I took them that number three here is a one of those panoramas and notice we have about we have should have 21 files here actually so what you're going to want to do is click on the first one and of course this is for Windows and then you're going to want to hold the shift down click on the last to select them all and then we're going to click open and uh, it's going to load all the files. should be pretty quick to load them. Now up here you'll notice you have a breadcrumb type menu that walks you through this step by step. Now there's a lot of stuff, there's actually a lot of things that this program can do and we're not going to go to it in this video. We're just going to use the default settings for the most part and, and walk you through it and uh, after you kind of get used to it you can experiment with this on your own. So then now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click Stitch. Now this is going to take some time to go through. Now this is a rather beefy computer I'm running it on. It's a 6 core AMD with a um, rather good sized GPU card etc. So it's going to take a while because you notice that aligning the pictures and actually aligning goes pretty fast but uh, where it tends to slow down is uh, compost, compositing images. I was going to say composting images for a minute. Uh, it's not too bad. It's uh, it moves through there fairly quick but if you have an older machine or you know just a dual or quad core it could take uh, some time to actually process and assemble all these pictures together okay so here we're back we have the composite set of images and uh, again you can notice over here that there's quite a few options and you'll notice a little bit of the flickering out here this is partly due to the screen recording uh, software that's running in the background causing it to flicker. Um, but you can change perspective on this and this is what's really cool about it. So you can you can change perspective and, and here I'm actually looking forward to being able to do 360 degree videos uh, with this. But that's going to be another that's going to be another video. Uh, so we can set up and we can look at different ones uh, and you can kind of go through and play with the, the different settings to see how it all comes. We want to use a cylindrical if I spit that out correctly here and uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and click this. I just kind of want to show you the different pieces. We're going to have auto orientation set so everything is pretty much set. We don't have to really do anything more here if we don't want to. Um, one side note though here I think what's handy to know is one of the things I work uh, or use quite a bit of 360 degree camera and again um, I can use this program to stitch that together to create uh, some of my um, you know stills in 360 degrees so again this kind of comes in handy for that but again we're only going to do the 180 uh, panorama here from the spark so the next thing we're going to click up on the breadcrumbs and click uh, crop. Now this is what you typically get out of your regular panorama software, this kind of you know crazy shape and then what you can do is you can actually drag these bars and crop this down. However, I'm going to share a tip with you guys. One of the very cool things about this ICE software is this up here. It's called Autocomplete. So if you click Autocomplete, watch what happens. Now it'll take a, a 
you know, a few seconds to run through. Again, your machine might take a little bit longer. This is a six core machine, so uh, it's pushing a little bit of uh, power behind it. But as you can see, it still takes a bit of time to run through those 21 different images as it's completing the panorama. But this next part is what really blows me away. There we go. We have a completed picture, except for a block in the middle. Okay. So that block is just an artifact, scared me for a minute. That block was just an artifact, again, of the screen recording software. Um, anyhow, so we're, we're back here. So we've it's filled in the picture. And so this is what I really find amazing. And it does a very good job at filling in the picture. And you can notice a few defects down here where it finished off the yellow protective topping on the fence and things like that. If you really look, but if you didn't know, you, you really would have a hard time seeing the defects in this. So I think this is really a neat feature of this software. And uh, then what we simply do uh, is go to export and we can now export it. Notice it's going to be a pretty large image because one of the things we can really, really zoom up because these trees, uh, if you saw in the original video, are ways out there. And, and before we hit pixelation, I mean, um, you know, we can really zoom in. Notice the, the power lines because those are the ones I typically like to stay when I'm flying out at this field on the other side of because they're pretty good sized power lines. Um, but anyways, as we zoom back out, you can kind of see the detail that this and how rich this picture is. So I, I'm pretty impressed. So, you know, basically all we do is now hit uh, export to disk. And I'm going to just put it back here uh, on the SD card for a second. So I'm going to export the panorama. And the nice part is you can export to a number of different formats. Adobe Photoshop, Windows Bitmap, PNG, TIFF, you know, so sort of a whole range of, of images. So anyways, I think this is, uh, you know, a really neat addition because one of the things I hate doing is going through the DJI app uh, to create the panoramas and, you know, basically the limited functionality it gives me in the fact I got to wait for the tablet to, you know, I mean, it takes a long time to go through all that, even with the substantial tablet. This does it you know, a whole lot faster and it gives you a whole lot more options because even if we... Uh, now go back and look at a couple of the um, because again we can we can set it up to also export uh, for deep zoom and do HD views so we can do a lot of different things with this uh, software that we obviously can't with the DJI Copter. Another feature I'm going to get into in another video is the ability to create a panorama from video also. So again, a lot of flexibility here. So hopefully you guys found this interesting, maybe learned a thing or two today. Um, and again, gives you some new and additional power with your Spark. So if you found this interesting, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget the subscribe button coming over there. And uh, let me know what you're having for dinner this time. Uh, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.